Hey, Mar. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, oh, I only see 10 eyeballs. <laughs> 10 eyeballs so far. They're going to start coming in. Hello, everybody. Hello, Trina. Welcome. Let me see if I got my alert yet. If, hello, Jennifer. Let you guys come on in so we can welcome you. Hello, Rhonda. Welcome. Huh. Tuesday's cookie therapy with me, Marlin, and Amy of Seriously Sweet. Uh, my, what did they call it? Handle is Montreal Confection. <laughs> How is everyone today? If if you're new to the live stream, we're decorating cookies today. That's what we do every Tuesday. Hello, Diana. Claudine. Alyssa, hello. Kathy, welcome, everybody. Hello, Karen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, my gosh. Cicadaville. Oh, <laughs> uh, does that mean that you're getting hit hard, Karen? You, you know, Mar, we're doing really well out here, but I saw pictures this weekend of up close to the city and there's just infestations of those. Cicadas. I have to Google it. I have to Google it. I yeah. kind of curious, you know, it's, it's quite a phenomenon to see. Hello, Rena. Yes. Hello, Sally, Barbie. Oh, Sally made it back. She had a long drive this morning. Oh, did she? Lynn Ann. And Jeremy. Jeremy. Hello. Oh, yes. Well, we'll, keep, we'll try to catch you. <laughs> Catch you up in a second. Hello, Becky, Emma, Bonnie, Shanna. Hello. Welcome, everybody. So every Tuesday, we decorate cookies, and we try to offer a few um, tips and tricks and, uh, you know, just to lighten your day and maybe get you hooked on this crazy thing. Yes. <laughs> Draw them right into Cookieville. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so last no. week, last week we, um, well, I'm, I'm thinking cause I'm on Fridays as well. So a little recap of my project from Friday is this one. You guys like that dress. Love that dress. I already ordered the mat, Mar. Did you? <laughs> I did. And, and so last week I um, created a thumbnail of my PNG file and accidentally loaded the JPEG like preview photo to my coffee shop. So if you downloaded the clickable supply link to that project, I'm sorry. It's corrected. If you want to go get it, it's free. It's in the coffee shop. And I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I just, um, you know, the thumbnail looked exactly like the PDF file, so I made the mistake of doing that. So my apologies. I love it. And so if you enjoy the, the live stream and you'd like to support us, you can uh, do that via our coffee shop. And I've got it um, here. Let me add the ticker at the bottom, and that's where you can find it. And every week we load our supply lists which are free so you can find everything it's a clickable uh, sheet so you can easily jump around on the internet to find all the places we get our goodies and then also the templates you can uh, purchase the digital files or templates to make royal icing transfers and that really uh, helps out the channel that's how we can kind of like you know pay our streaming service and the, the materials we use yeah. hello amber hello hello Hi, Amber. And I just saw a couple ladies from my local cookie group are here today. Allison's here and Sammy's here. Well, welcome. And you guys, if you're not getting your Facebook notifications, you can sign up for the texting alert. We'll pop that up later so you have the number. Just text oh, the word great. live stream. There it is. We'll put it back later, too. And if you um, have to leave or whatever, this is uh, the live is saved so you can uh, rewatch it later on Facebook or YouTube, yep. they're saved. So we're on every Tuesday at one and I'm on Fridays with these lovely ladies. Han and Amber, you guys had such a good time last Friday. 
Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, it's like I find the live streaming. Now, bear with me when I say this. It's a little like working out. <laughs> like at first, you know, you're getting everything ready. You're like, do I really want to do this? It's all, it's all, you know, you're like, it's, it's, it is a lot of prep. You know, it is a lot of prep. Then you get there and you're like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, it's so fun. Everyone's here and it's nice to visit. Oh, oh good. I forgot her text. Good. Well, you guys sign up for that. It's really easy to do. And I'm sorry, um, my husband started a new uh, a new thing this morning and I set an alarm to help him remember and uh, somehow I deleted my other alarm. So the intent is that you get them five to 10 minutes before we start. But I think today it was three. So I'm sorry about that and I will do better. I just have to Look make sure he's taking it personal. <laughs> You're not exhausting. It's just... <laughs> And like I was actually saying, you know, it's like, oh, try to think of in, like interesting ideas four times a week. You know, it's not as easy as someone might think. You know, it's like, oh, how are you going to be, uh, you know, an original this week? Uh, you know, hello, <laughs> you Joseph. Hello. Oh, hi, Joseph. Right, Amy. It's um, like I have to be, you know. It is like last week I was fine because I knew I had two weeks worth of bees, but I was just telling Mara a minute ago, I'm not really sure what I'm doing next week. So drop in some comments. I mean, I have a couple of ideas floating, but nothing's really, um, nothing's clicked into final gear yet for me. So Amy, did you want to start? Um, I can, or I can go second. I can do either. You, I think I started last week. So why okay. don't you, you want me to go ahead and pop in? Yeah. All right, so last week, guys, I need to do the camera dance real quick. Let me move myself up to be a small area up here. Look at, I just knocked myself totally off. Can you still see the bees? Um, we can. See, I, I see you in the corner, and I see the okay, bees. Good. So last week we did, um, what did we do? Uh, beautiful. We did beautiful cookies. And um, the, you guys have already reproduced the cookies and there's a blog out and you're doing great. I'm so impressed with how great and how fast you've duplicated them. But in last week's um, coffee shop listing is the supply list with the clickable shopping links, plus these three templates. These work great also with this week, but we're not going to focus on those because I've done two videos on that. If you want a really in-depth video on creating the royal icing transfers that we did last week. Um, you can check out my Seriously Sweet store page and there's a nice in-depth one Tuesday evening last week. So I told you I would come back and we would do these cool bees this week. So these are the little cutters um, from that little Ann Clark set where there's like nine pieces in the set and it's linked on your supply list. But I wanted to show these to you in particular because we can turn these into different kinds of bees, but you know how we like to reuse cutters and flip cutters and all that kind of stuff? So this one is a really cute bee, and I really don't see anything else but a bee when I look at this one. But when I look at this one, this is such a cute ladybug cookie. If you haven't made many ladybug cookies, this is a great cutter for that. Hey, Han. Um, and then this one is a great like wasp type bee because of the long, thin body structure. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do wafer paper wings on this today, but this also makes a great dragonfly. So if you want to mix up your little flying insects and do bees and dragonflies and ladybugs, this is a really cute set. And you can see they're all sized appropriately. So it wouldn't be like you had a big three or four inch cookie with some little two inch cookies. Oh, hey, hey, Jennifer. And Lisa is from my cookie group, too. I'm so glad you guys joined today. So when we made our transfers, we made two sizes last week. We made this large B and the small B. And then one of the things that I did during the week that I wanted to show you, it's super easy. I definitely think you guys should try it out. Just some regular parchment paper. Take your whatever color yellow that you're using to flood your cookies and continue to add just straight powdered sugar to it until it becomes almost like a Play-Doh consistency. Just do a little bit at a time, not a whole bunch, because obviously adding that sugar is gonna dry it out really fast. So what I did was I just took a piece of bubble wrap. All right, let me slide this up. I took a piece of bubble wrap. I took that little ball. It was no bigger than the tip of my thumb. I put it on the bubble wrap, put my bubble wrap over, pressed on the parchment, continued to press. If you have enough sugar 
um, added to where it's a really dry consistency, a couple of minutes, you're going to be able to peel that bubble wrap right back off. And it makes this really cool three-dimensional honeycomb. So isn't that neat to get some additional dimension on your cookies? But so you don't have bubble wrap. You just have to order something from Amazon and they'll wrap it and then you'll have. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to buy any bubble. You'll have it. It's just the little the little eighth inch bubbles, right? There's usually two sizes, the great big ones and this little one. This also works great if you want to do this with chocolate. It works really good with chocolate to make the honeycomb. But this is just a basic hexagon cookie. I took the little ball. This is when you squish it out, it makes that. So I thought I would show you how to use TMP gold later today and we'd paint this little section. And then we're gonna try to do a little stamping right up in here. But we need to move quickly if we're gonna get through all of that. In, your, in the coffee shop today, you have several things in there. You have, I put it all in one listing today for a set price so that you didn't have to go around and find supply lists and find templates. But you have four different templates in there today. You have two sizes of each of these cookies. So you have this really pretty daisy and you have two sizes of this. And then you have a side view daisy, which I don't know about you, Mar, but I'm totally digging all of the side view florals that are out this year, how everybody's really pressing that forward and experimenting with it. So I created you a side view and this view. And I want to show you that your templates actually do double duty for you. In, the, in your supply list, you get you can order these little cello bags. And remember, we talked about moving your templates from one to the other and letting things dry. So you can pre-make all of your centers. Instead of trying to copy this and get you the exact size you needed, what I normally do for these is I go through and I make all of my centers, do a whole sheet of centers on the size template that I'm making. Then I pull my template out. I go into another bag and I pipe the, the lower part of the petals. And then while those are wet, I'll go back and pull my dry centers that I piped and just pop them on top so that my flower is fully done and can come right off once the, it sets up. Now this, we're gonna go back and do a little line drawing on to tie it into the stamping. Uh, same thing with this daisy. So you do your, set your centers, Pull your template out. That's how they do double duty. And you don't need an extra circle template to make your centers. So you just pull, do your centers, let the, pull the template out, go ahead and do the white bits. Um, you can do these plenty ahead of time, like, you know, four to six hours ahead. So you can pop them off. Then you can immediately go and add them to your next template. So you have two sizes of each of these today. And then you have um all, I, in the supply list, you have all the links to go to the bags and the size paper that I used to print on. So you'll end up with a side view daisy and a top view daisy. And I'm just going to pop those over here out of the way real quick. We're going to circle back on our bees. Was anybody, um, is anybody on that was on the other live feed that we did where we made flowers and this was in your supply list? So if you already own this um, wafer paper or paper punch, which I'm using for wafer paper. You may already own this from when we did the flower. So if you have this, you're just using wafer paper and we're gonna be using the larger size of the teardrop shape today. So you just pop a couple out and it's gonna be up to you whether you use the smooth side or whether you use the textured side. It's B wings is what we're gonna use it for. So I'm gonna be using the textured side, but some people will like the smooth, that's fine too. But this is a great wing for this cookie. So when we get to this cookie, we're just going to flood the wings and we're going to drop our paper in and we'll kind of bend it upward a little bit. And look, my um, the stamping, when I was practicing stamping, my bottle exploded on me. So that's what that is. And then in your supply list today, you have nine little stamps. They're on one sheet listed in there for the Be Happy stamps. So I have a little bee and I have this cute daisy. We're going to combine this with our daisy so we have a multi-level cookie. And I thought I'd show you really quick. I prefer these stamps because they're real easy to clean. Um, more For me, more so than the rubber stamps with the blocks. I also find that leaving them like this and just trimming around the plastic that they're attached to gives them more flexibility when I want to stamp on the cookie. So I'm, I don't tend to crack my icing as much. The thing about these is people always have a little bit of trouble with this because 
um, this is not as porous as the other crafting stamps. So what I found that works really well, if you don't have an airbrush, now if you have an airbrush, the airbrush, for whatever reason, you can lightly spray this with the airbrush and then stamp, and that works great. But if you're trying to do this without an airbrush and you want to use the stamp pad ink, and I listed this for you too, this is black stamp edible ink from Americolor, and it's a huge bottle. You'll only ever need one. I also listed a stamp pad, an uninked stamp pad on there for you. And I know that you guys are going to ask me the question, can you use that? Is it food safe? It is not any more or less food safe than using sponges to do your stamping or using brushes to do the stamping. As long as it has only been used for food, you should be good to go. So I linked you the one that I use. You can use that stamp ink and fill it. It has a nice seal so it doesn't dry out. But here's what I like about these little stamps. With just a little emery board, you can rough up this stamp so it's not so slick. You need it just to get a little edge on it. I'm doing this very lightly. You could also use super fine sandpaper, but an emery board is about as fine as anything you can get on the market in the hardware section. So I just prefer to use these. They're easier to control. A little bit of rough, then go wash this, let it dry. I've already done these two guys. We'll be using them in a minute. So we're going to do the little daisy and the little bee. And the reason I'm showing you the super small one today and this large daisy one is because I want you to see that they're actually easier to work with if they're larger. Some people are afraid of the larger stamps, um, but the little ones actually, they're trying to get a lot of detail in a very compact amount of space. So sometimes they don't stamp as well. All right, so let's swap over to our bees. Did I, are we good with all that, Mar? Yeah, I'm not seeing okay. any. Well, there's no questions really to ask yet. Okay, so on our bee, I thought I'd show you something that's just fun today. I really like doing brush embroidery work and I know several of you do too. So I have a little container off to the side. I'm just putting a little bit of water into it. I'm using the brush that I linked in the pack for you today from Wilton, the rounded tip one. I like this one for what I'm about to do, but you can also use the flat brushes and turn them on their side. That works well, too. We're going to start with this little bee, and we're just going to go ahead and do the wings on this little guy. So I'm just putting down a good amount. This is a thicker icing. I'm doing a nice edge on it. I've got my brush over to the side. I'm going to dip off the water because I just need it moist. And we're going to do a little brush embroidery with this. Is that showing up okay? It is. Okay, good. So you just want a little texture. Now, I will tell you, over the weekend, we had a local class, and we did bees in our class. And one of the things I experimented with for the ladies was I just took my black icing, and I painted a layer of black icing underneath so that when I did the brush embroidery, it was on top of the dried black painted on icing. And you know how bees have that, um, they're actually veins, but you know they have like that skeleton in their wings that you can see if you've ever seen a dead bee and they're dried. So those are really veins, like the exoskeleton. Um, but it looks like that when you do the black paint underneath instead of just, or a chocolate cookie, you could do this on top of a chocolate cookie and really get the same effect. But it's just a really nice texture effect for your cookie. So see how cute his little wing is? Let's lift that up and get a good look. You can get a lot of texture on these with the brush embroidery. They're small cookies. They'll draw a lot of attention at a party with something like this on them, with this little bit of extra effort, right? But you can see how fast it's actually going. If we weren't, if I wasn't showing you what I was doing, I could move through this really fast. Just go up a little, little bit, Amy. How's that? Is that better? Perfect. Okay, good deal. Thank you. I reset all my cameras this weekend to try to keep the upper camera so it wasn't showing in the pictures. And I think I got that. I just have to get down where my work area is. You know, you get used to one thing and then try to switch it. So that this this little bee, we're just going to do the brush embroidery. OK, now let's pop over to this bee and we're just going to do a flood an outline and flood consistency icing and put a base you're, layer down. You're too low. Too low again. So See I'm, that line right there on your work surface? This one? That's, that's, yeah, don't okay. stay, stay on, on that line. Perfect. 
So we'll do a quick outline and flood. And this is a really loose icing. It doesn't need to be thicker because we're going to drop in those cool wafer paper wings on top. Okay. So let's give it a little shake. Let's try to coerce all the little areas together there. I'm going to put the textured side up, but you know, on the wafer paper, there's a textured and there's a shiny. If you want the shiny, that's great. The other thing is it didn't come in, but I ordered stamps that have that veining that I was talking about. Oh, in the yeah, yeah. So you could stamp your wafer paper ahead of time, then position your punch and get the best veins. And then you, this would be stamped before you put it on. But when you do that, you guys, if you decide to do that, you don't want to do what I'm about to do and drop this on wet icing because you'll have black ink on your wafer paper. You're going to need to make sure this icing below is totally dry so that you can just put a little dab of icing under here, a thick icing that won't make that color bleed when it goes through the wafer paper. Otherwise, your stamping will bleed, okay? But this little guy, I'm just going to tuck this in. This is great for butterflies. It works great for dragonflies. So just something to get you thinking that you could have some more uses. And can you see what I'm doing? I'm just giving it a little bend. I'm, I'm not having to dampen the paper to do this. I'm just very, very slightly damp, uh, bending it with my fingers. And the reason I'm able to do that, this is still that same pack of wafer paper that I got when we started doing wafer paper back in, what was it, February, Mar? So I, it's sealed in a Ziploc bag. And because it's sealed, it's not getting super brittle, which is what happens if you leave it open air or unsealed, okay? So this is another technique you can do for wings. And then this little guy, we're just going to come back and we're going to do a really rough wing using toothpaste consistency, okay? So let's move that. Oops. This one is a little, it ran off. So give me just a sec. So this is all I'm going to do with this, you guys, to just clean this up. It seems to have stopped, but I don't want to end up with that on the bottom of all the cookies. You know how that is. Once it gets sticky, it goes everywhere. So we're going to use a toothpaste consistency icing. And I'm going to do some pressure piping here. And I'm going to try to do it so you can see it from the side. I'm starting at the end. Now, it works better if you're straight up and down. You'll get the ridges, but I'm going to try to tip it sideways so you can still see what I'm doing. But with the bouncing and the pressure piping, I'm getting a nice puffy wing without doing an outline and flood. Can you see that? And if your icing is thick enough, it's going to keep those cool ridges. So it just gives you a neat texture in case you want to maybe go back. This would be a fun cookie to go back and do some of the gold painting because it shows up so nice. And again, I'm going to try from the side. I'm starting at the edge, letting it touch down. I'm not touching the cookie during this process. And the pressure from my hand is what's causing it to go out as far as it is. And then I'm relaxing on that pressure and pulling it out to a point. Okay. So you've got lots of ideas for your little bees on how to do their wings. Let me pull this one over. Also, what's really cute on here, this one painted gold is so sweet. It looks adorable. So if you have like a queen bee shower and they're using black, yellow, gold, and white, this is a great place to add the gold. Amy. Because, yes, ma'am. Well, what's the difference? Uh, Debbie asked about rice paper. I've seen that. The wafer paper is the rice paper, isn't I, it? Well, I think the rice paper, actually, you guys, if you hold on one second, I'll grab and show you what rice paper is. It's more, I believe, Mar, what they used to make. Sorry, I have to tip you if you get sick. Like in Asian cooking? Yes, it's like, it's this. This is, this is. Oh, yes, yes. So this is like what they make the paper sales out of, mm. right, for cakes. When, and you have to wet it. Let me rip this one open. I got this in to do an experiment for a cake for this summer. It's much harder. Oh, it is. And it looks like, um, do you see how it has that? Yes, basket weave on it. That that disappears when you wet it and color it, and this becomes so so sticky. But this is really rice paper versus the wafer paper. Wafer paper. It, I hope that I'm telling you this correctly, but based on what I currently know, it's more of like a paper, a potato starch type paper, where mm -hmm. the other is rice. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. Is that it? That was the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm glad I had that here. I knew someone might ask eventually, so I ordered that in. Um, what were we doing, Mar? Oh, we're going back to do bodies. So now we have the gold that we've picked, and this is Hobby Lobby gold. 
So you can see it's not metallic gold, it's just the color gold, which works great if you want to use a metallic edible gold over top of it, okay? So we're gonna come back and just do their bodies. I like that yellow for, for so many things though. It's less like the, the lemon yellow, you know, it just is a yes. little bit. It, it just has that right color to it, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. So on this little guy, we're going for more of a wasp look. So we're going to do the texture that we did here, but we're going to do it on his little body here, okay? So we're going to start up here, and these, these little bees really look like they have two sections. They have this body section here, right? Because on these bees, their head is super small. It's not like a bumblebee where the head and the body are both, um, you know, large and round and separate. These guys kind of run together and then you can just color on your little black eyeballs with your marker afterwards. And the reason I like to color the eyeballs on is because I keep going back to that video that you did, Mar, where you did the rabbit eyeballs and then colored them on the bee cookies, especially that marker on top of the dried icing when you color it is super shiny. And that's actually what it would look like on the bee. So it's just really cool. Now, if your icing is thick enough, I'm not sure mine's going to work for this, but if it's thick enough, you should be able to come right back in and pipe next to that without worrying about them healing together. But you see his cute little body. And then if you work from the center pull out, when you're pulling out, you, you've got that natural point that breaks off on a thicker icing. You can use that to your advantage like it's a stinger, right? So we're going to slide him over. Then let's go to this little guy and we're going to do his whole body. We're going to do a, his whole body and then we're going to come back and do his head. I want to show you a trick about doing the heads on these bees. So can you see that I'm bouncing the bag? So I'm creating this really puffy bum on my bee. Can you see that? You see how much lift we got on that? Now, again, this works better if you do this straight up and down. Okay, if you put your bag perpendicular to your cookie, because what's happening is you're letting gravity and um, the way you're piping, it's going to make your circle. So you don't have to outline and flood because, you know, when you outline and flood, people always say they have trouble getting that outer circle to look like a circle. So if you're straight above your cookie, find the center of where you want your head to wind up and you line your bag up perpendicular. And then I'm going to show you from a side angle. So it might turn out more ovalish, right? Because the way you hold the bag mm -hmm. makes a difference. But what you're trying to do is just shoot that icing. And you see it makes a perfect circle. Instead of doing the outline and flood, you see how easy that is. Mm -hmm. So let me show you on this cookie. I'm going to hold it straight up and down. But I want to show you on a white background, okay? Let me just turn this into my hand. Maybe this will help a little. But to make that circle, and this is great for flower centers. This is great for your royal icing transfers. But I'm literally not picking up a scribe as I'm doing this because as I'm pushing that icing in, I'm just raising the bag up and down. And just that little bit of motion in most cases is enough to heal up where you're piping. Now, if you come all the way to the end, and you have a little bit there, just knock that little tip down. And then this is a 25 second icing, so that'll disappear. But do you see how nice, what a nice 3D circle we're getting here, right? We got a lot of dimension. This icing, Laura, will not flatten if you give it a shake because it's too thick, but it will, a little bit of a shake will help it smooth out. So you can, you can go either way on that. If you know this is going to be a face, you really want to make sure you get rid of that point where you pulled the bag out. So do you see just that little bit of coaxing? And now I have a nice smooth surface. It looks like an egg, doesn't it, Mar? Like a fried egg. A sunny side of egg. So that's it. Priscilla wanted to know if you push it, push it, you want it to be smooth. Say that, say that again. So Priscilla was asking if you are pressure piping but want it to be smooth, because you see you've been bouncing to create those ripples. Yes. Okay, so you saw that was all the same icing though, right? Uh -huh. So just the extra jiggle with the bag will cause those ridges to heal up. But it does take practice, you guys, because that's the exact same thing that we just did with this little bee. And you can see this has been more than 30 seconds and we kept every one of the ridges for his little body. Okay. 
All right, so pop over to this one. Absolutely. Uh, the recipes are in her coffee shop. She's got, uh, I think you have all your cookie and your icing. In I, have a, I have a basic sugar cookie and a basic icing recipe, and they are definitely still in the coffee shop. For now, Mark, do you- running at the bottom of the page there. Do you have a trick for um, what she's asking about? Is there something maybe I'm not aware of that people do? Because for no, me- I, I, I mean, that's what it is. She she was purposely moving, agitating her hand. It's difficult to see in the live because the like the streaming, like it kind of jumps the frames. But right. she was, her hand was literally going up and down as she's piping a little bit, so it causes this kind of little uh, kind of ripple in her icing. But if she was to move slowly and evenly, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't cause all that rippling, and then just an agitation would would smooth it out. It's I mean, just, we're, we're not seeing her movement completely. All right, so let's see that. We just did the body, same bag, all stayed in frame. And you see how smooth the head is? Oh, you're too high. Too high, let me pull down. So you see how smooth the head is versus the body? And that's literally the same bag of icing. So it's just a little bit of practice and it does have to do with the bag right? Like I don't want to shake this cookie because I don't want to lose those ridges. So I did have to pick up my scribe and knock down that point. Okay. So aren't these cute? Look at these bees and how different they all look. So you've got lots of techniques here to choose from. Let's look at these guys, right? And then we also talked about possibly doing stamping on your wafer paper if you want the veining. Now, one thing that I'll be coming back to do, when I'll do it later when these are dry. I'm going to run them through the dehydrator for a little bit, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to use my marker to do just a little antenna and I'm going to draw a sweet little face on here and I'll do some black here and probably just come across the body to do the stripes for the bumblebee. And I'll probably paint this one wing gold, one wing not painted, just so you guys can see what it looks like. But what we're going to do is hop over and try to do a little bit of the stamping real quick because I think I'm pretty close to my 30 minutes. Yes, pretty you're, good. You're good. Okay, so here's the other thing, you guys. The reason I love doing these B projects is because um, you can use all the same bags of icing. And then look at these sweet little flowers. This is also in that Nine Please and Clark set. But that pressure piping, just think about what we just talked about, about creating the transfers, the same exact icing. This is my same bag of toothpaste consistency icing. I've got it cut at about a four at the tip. And let's just watch what we can do here. We're angling it, pressure piping. I'm doing a little jiggle. And look at that cool daisy petal, right? So starting it where you get a nice circle, then good pressure piping and pulling in the petal. Do you see that open area? I'm going to, I can let this flower dry completely and come back and add a whole nother petal. So I get even more dimension, but this is so easy. How quick could you go through these if you needed to do them for a party? And if you don't feel like you have enough icing, did you see what I just did? How I got more icing in there. So I started and I came down too quick. Do you see? You could just scrape and start over. If you don't want to do that, just inject that bag back into the tip, pull some of that icing down so it's out of the way, and you can start injecting again, right? It's similar to cookie Botox, but it's just so that you don't have to stop and pick up a scribe. You can keep going. Now, what's nice, what I like about this, this looks maybe a little more rustic than you want it to look right now, but because it's 25 or 30 second icing, this is going to smooth out a little bit on its own and you don't have to play with it, but it's nice because it looks like a natural flower petal. You know, they're not perfectly smooth and shiny. So it just depends on the look that you're going for. Am I staying in frame okay, Mark? Yeah. Okay. So for me, I'd let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and I'll add petals in between. And then I'll use my template. what I do with those? So, you know, those centers I made earlier, I can just pop another one of these centers off, right? I'm going to show you on this one. Oop, oop. Not with that one. Blooper reel. So pull this one off 
of my transfer sheet. And I'm using the round because it's uh, um, you're directly looking at the daisy. Oop. All right. So I'll put this off in my hand here. And then if I'll have done my second row of petals, then I'll just drop that in the center. And look how cute it is with the candy. So we just got our candy in here too. And if you want to get really fancy while your white is on there, one layer of white, or when you do your second layer, you can hit this with some white diamond dust and it'd be so pretty. Now, if you don't mind me wrecking this cookie, because I just want you to see what something looks like. Someone asked me last week and I told them I'd show them on camera this week. They wanted to know if these diamond dusts are really all different. Can you really tell that they're colored or not? Now, when I do the gold on the bees, this just adds a nice gold shimmer to it. This gold 10 karat gold diamond dust. But what they wanted to know was what does it show up like on other colors? So I'm going to do it on this cookie just so you can see it so that you can tell it really does show up. Can you see that? It really does show up gold. A little bit lower. There we go. How's that? So you see, you really can tell what these colors are worth buying depending on what the project calls for for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So I really do want to go back quickly if I can, and I want to hit this B with some of this gold diamond dust. So I'm just going to do it in my hand. It's a working day for me, so I'll be scrubbing my hands later today anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything to do this. But look how cool his body is once we add the shimmer, right? Without doing the painting. This is another great way to get that shimmer, see all the ridges and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So now you can see what that looks like. I'll scrape this one and redo it and post it as a finished cookie because you've seen enough of how to do it that you'll be able to go back and recreate that one. But I do want to show you this real quick. We talked about how to create your honeycomb. Am I still okay on time? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll finish up. This will be my last one. So I thought this would be so cool with the honeycomb. And I thought I'd show you today what to do if you don't have the air the airbrush. This is what I did last week for you. And I did that on and made like a jar, like a piece of dripping honeycomb, like you'd actually cut it out of the comb. You know, out where I live, it's a rural area and they call that country bubble gum. The old time farmers out here just go out in the honeycombs and they slice that out and they chew on it. Oh, really? Yeah, that's when I grew up as a kid, that's what they called it. And I, I'm not sure who's brave enough to still go digging around in the beehives out here, but that is a real thing. So last week I showed you how to use this and we had the issue with the airbrush. So I went back on Tuesday night after I had my airbrush totally cleaned out and showed you how to make the comb. So this, you could do comb here with your airbrush if you want, and then add your 3D piece and then maybe put one of your daisies on here if you wanted to, or maybe one of your bees from last week, you know, any, anything you want to do there. But what I want to show you today is just a little bit of stamping. So I want to come back to this little daisy. This is a sweet little daisy that's very similar to the template that you guys are getting. It's not exact but it is similar to the side view of the template style that they I made here. Okay. I'm sorry. I said they do look similar. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's, it'll be nice. It's a good set for you to mix if you get those particular items, right? They, they look like they go together well. And remember earlier, we talked about roughing up your stamp and then all I'm using to do this is I have some of that stamp ink in here. I put it out about an hour before we started because I wanted it to dry out just a little bit because it's really too thin if you're gonna do this by hand. And basically all you're doing on this cookie is you're just swiping that ink. Now this one's been used and it's been roughed up a little, but can you see how it's grabbing? Let me see if I can get close enough. Yeah, I'm just swiping across the top because I don't have a stamp pad here to show you. But can you see because it's slightly roughed up that it's grabbing the ink and the ink is staying up on top. So you're not getting too much ink on the stamp. Right. And also, you guys, please be gentle with yourselves when you're doing these stamps. Stamps are difficult even when you do what you're supposed to do with them on paper. And we just took them and tried to apply them to a different medium. So you have more things to account for. Right. You're generally not working on 100 percent flat surface. So do you see how it's grabbing though? Now, what I typically like to do, you don't have to do this once you get comfortable with it, but just to show you, 
I typically like to do it on a paper towel, just on a paper towel to show you if you've got any problem areas that you need to re-rough up, okay? We're going to move on with this one because I want to make sure Mar has time. So I'm going to re-ink it, and I'm really just running this across the top. I'm not putting a lot on here, and this is a drier ink. And this is how you would do it if you don't have the airbrush, okay? But if you have an airbrush, a light coating of black airbrush color works great for these. All right, now let's see how it comes out on the actual cookie. And if you need another, and then you know what? Let's move up and use this little guy so you can actually see just this. Um, do you remember it was the purse that I did? Now I'm just gently holding it and I'm tapping because I just need enough of a background. There we go. So see, you can get that nice daisy outline. Then you can come back. I made a raised area here. Do you know how we did that lift before where we did a dried circular piece and then flooded our whole cookie? So I have a ridge there because I wanted to put a raised flower in that area. Then what I'll do is I'll let this completely dry and then I can come back with the fine point in of my edible ink marker. And if I have any gaps, I never try to restamp. That doesn't work well for me. Other people have great luck with it, but you can see right here where I have a few gaps. I'll just come back with this fine point end of my edible ink marker and fill in those little bits. And so I have that nice little look. If I want, I can just put my other daisy right over top. But you see, it just creates a whole nother look to your cookie, okay? All right, well, Mar, that's everything I have for today, except I did want to... I did want to tell them this. I put this on your supply link just because it's fun. It's a fondant mold and I'm just regular fondant in it. But I made these cute bees. So this is the bee that the mold that's in your link makes. So cute. I made them in white. I forgot to color them. Really what I intended to do was to color this with a little bit of the yellow food gel, then make the bee so that I could paint metallic gold over it later and add it to one of these little cookies, right? Just a sweet little piece to go on the cookie. All right, and that's it for me today. Awesome, thank you, Amy. I don't so know if the phone is on because I can hear myself over at your place. Uh, no, but my, my air conditioner's on. Do you think that's what you're hearing? No, I hear my own voice. Okay, okay. it's fine now. All right, guys, so thank you, Amy. If you guys have questions, she checks her comments under the video as well. And if you want, if you just came into the live, this will be available for replay on both of our Facebooks and YouTube and you can rewatch. She did a different bee theme last week and she wasn't thrilled with how they turned out. She had a few little technical difficulties during our live, so she redid it that evening. So <laughs> Let's translate. The airbrush just did not work. I had a blooper reel moment. <laughs> Everything can be purchased via, if you go on coffee, all right, here, Maria. So if you look here on the screen, I'm gonna put the link, okay? So this is the coffee shop, if you go, uh, ko-fi.com slash seriously sweet that's her coffee shop link and there you can uh, it's free you can download a clickable pdf file where she has all her supplies i have the same for my project and that's how our supply lists work you can download them and then you're not you get to save it on your computer you can refer back to it and um we get a small commission if you purchase via those links so it's a win-win for everybody. Now, right. This week, you guys, I'll go back and separate it for you if you want. But this week, I just dropped the supply list straight in with the template. So it was just one thing with five downloads. So it's not up there separate. But I can do that if anybody just wants the supply list. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy, thank you. <laughs> it was my All first right, real big do, blooper reel. Let's, let's do a little. <laughs> you got your, or your, where's your hand camera? Oh, okay, uh, it's not go. on. I just turned it on. So here okay. we go. All right. So first thing I just wanted to quickly show you guys. Oh, let me get this comment out. So this is, uh, could you not put those up, please? Sorry. Don't, don't <laughs> put it up. No, because I oh. it, it hides my thing. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> All right. So this was last week's um, on uh, Friday. I did this margarita cookie project and a lot of you are buying the airbrush and this is a great project to use your airbrush if you want to practice painting with your airbrush 
So this is stencil and shield. So with the download, I have it uh, reduced for the live, the live stream kind of special rate there, $3. So you get the step-by-step -step video and all the digital files. So you can cut it and make like a painted margarita cookie. And you get also the, the template to hand cut the cookie. So you'll be able to recreate these. And that was um, the dress is last Friday's live stream, if you want to see that. And in the supply list is both the cookies there for, for that project. So today we're working on, I published a, uh, a Facebook video a few like months ago, I want to say. And it went viral. Everybody was loving the cookie pop. So it's a version of this. I'm just going to replay that particular video that went viral on Facebook. So you see today I'm doing a version oh. of this. So in this version, that's a stiff icing, which I'm doing kind of a, um, a petal a tip like with stiff icing. So it's holding the, um, the shape of the icing and then filling in a lighter pink. I love that with that edging, Mara. It's beautiful. Yeah, it makes it a little bit kind of fancy. And then here, they're mounted as a bouquet. So there's two versions oh. there. So you bake your cookie stick inside the cookie, and then you assemble them. And I mean, party season is, you know, up upon us. And this is just a nice thing to bring to a birthday, but also just a barbecue. It'd be a nice centerpiece. So let's just look at the cookie cutter. So that, um, the stencils, uh, no, those aren't on uh, Patreon. They're just on coffee, that, that particular one. Oh, you're working on the beach box. Yes, that's a fun one. That's also in the coffee shop, but in the groups as well. <laughs> they so, love it. This is the cookie cutter. Certain cookie cutters are more prone to cutting and just not like ideal, depending on what you're, you know, if you're just making them at your house, obviously it's not so bad, but if you're planning on shipping or doing different things. So this one here, I just cut off the bottom. I cut off his legs and you can see here, I replaced his legs with the lollipop stick. So it was a perfect thing. Oh. So this, this is actually a set, very affordable Wilton set, 50 mm -hmm. different critter, like, not 50 critters but it's 50 shapes a lot of critters and a lot of and it's you know it's a good plastic shape it's not like the top quality but it does the job if you're just right. building your inventory it's a fine like fine quality i've had this for many many years and then this is one of my favorite cutters also by wilton and the one that i put in the supply list actually is a two edge one side is scalloped and then you have this kind of like just straight edge and it's a nesting set. And okay. I, love, I love this set to do leaves, to do wings, to do uh, petals. I mean, there's so many things that I've used this particular shape for. It's just really one of those kind of things that you can add to so many other projects. <laughs> like even um, waves i did once for uh, like a cupcake topper i made like waves and put it in there's so many things you can do so let's look at how i make my cookie pops how, how thick are those mar they're i roll them normal a quarter inch quarter. yeah so it's hard to see because they're black but mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different ways that people make cookie pops the thing that happens 50 cutter set yeah <laughs> So what happens when you're making your cookie pops, a lot of people insert the, the popsicle stick inside the cookie. So you have cookie on both sides. But when you add the, the icing, you're adding moisture. And so they can fall right off, like it could break. So what I do is I cut my cookies when they're room temperature. I notch the cookie. I press the dough into the, the pop, what am I saying? The lollipop stick into the raw dough. Okay, and then I freeze them. And when I bake them, I put my stick on the cookie sheet and I bake my cookie upside down, okay? Oh, what a great tip. So when the cookie bakes, it kind of wraps slightly around the stick. And so then when I'm decorating, well, on one side I have cookie dough and on the other side I have the edible concrete, the royal icing, which is okay. what really holds your cookie pop together. If you've struggled with cookie pops, and they've fallen and broken, mm -hmm. this might be the thing that, that makes it work for you. Because the royal icing 
I mean, it holds huge gingerbread houses together. It right. it's certainly able to hold a lollipop stick together into no. the food. Mar, somebody had a question about um, tips on storing the nested set so they don't get lost, dumped in a bin. I, I I don't know how you store yours, but I I have those mini Ziploc bags that my nested sets go in before they go into wherever I'm storing them or hanging them. Well, that's a, that's a great tip. I personally store my cookie cutters in the Michael's uh, scrapbooking paper boxes the so clear bins really, here's one here just to show it to you so they're not they're not thick and deep right but they're big and so i like i just leave them at the bottom and i'll usually look upside down <laughs> and i can see what's in my bin so right here is one of my nesting cutters i can see it right there here's another and so this is only about like three inches tall and you really can see a lot of your cutters. And this is five dollars. This is mm -hmm. that holds the 12 by 12 paper sheets, right? That's right. And that's how I store my cookie cutters. I find that quickly I can see a lot of them. Instead of having narrow, tall, right. I find shallow, big. And, and then the clear have... ones. The clear ones are key, aren't they? Well, yes, that's absolutely so, so Mar, confession time. How many of those do you actually have? Well, right here, I have about 10. About 10. Okay, 10. And there's at least two or three rows deep in there. So if you have that many, please don't feel convicted. Mars, right there with you. Well, yes. yes, yes. I, I have to say. All right. So I'm working with a new product today here. Let me look. What did I want to show you guys? So I, I recently had been showing you guys. I use a bin like a store. My lipstick, what did she say? Uh, couplers and Wilton tubs, small. Yes, the the lipstick one is good for your colors. The lipstick holder. Tips, couplers, and Wilton tubs. She uses that bin that you have. Yeah. Okay, so recently you guys may have seen I was talking about drip color markers. It's that super fine marker, and I love their product that product so much. I bought the colored markers that I used with the Easter Bunny. And then I went and checked out their website and went a little crazy, maybe. <laughs> so anyway, it. so today we're using one of their colors, and here it is. So their products are from um, Argentina, They're, and so everything's kind of in Spanish. But if if uh, you know if you're uh, got Google Translate, you can get by. I do have the link to the to the to their website in the supply list. So today, this is the color I'm using. And if you look at the wing here, or actually, let me bring the piping bags into frame so you can see them. The oh, icing, wow. the icing, it's just, uh, I mean, the color, it's different. I don't know how to really articulate the different. I want to say it looks more natural. Like it okay. looks less artificial. It And it has the speckling that happens it's a powder it's not a gel i don't know is, I really that, um, is that ombre of all that same color it is all the same color oh, beautiful it's rosa trinitaria <laughs> give my spelling or my or my pronunciation anyway so yes and then so i wanted to just show you guys the difference so Normally or not normally when you're starting out you tend to go with one color and here you can see it's the same same thing Done in three colors. Wow. So it's it's really exactly if you look at it aside from the fact that one is a chocolate cookie One's a vanilla cookie. All I did different here was use more than one color And that's easy to do without having to buy a lot of different things. You're just adding a little bit of color, you bag right. it. Then you add a little bit more color, you bag it. You add a little bit more color, you bag it. You can do just a two color ombre or you can do a three. Even you could go four if you wanted to. And it just Beautiful. gives the design a different overall kind of, you know. And I do like for these types of cookies, a chocolate cookie. I find that it just, right, it gives it a nice perimeter here you can see it yeah the pop it really pops on that dark cookie it does right it's like it just and so here this one i just wanted to show you 
this is two colors, this one, and just like a, a bit of a scallop. You, you know, it's it? pretty, Mar, your two outside cookies. Look at the difference from just how much more um, intense the colors look on that chocolate one versus the vanilla. Oh, yes. Right? Absolutely. It's, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the chocolate canvas is really um, gorgeous, I find. Like, it's a hard cookie. I don't use the chocolate cookies for the videos very much because I find them hard to actually, like, see. Right? Okay. Like, like mm -hmm. it's like it looks like I'm decorating a, a piece of coal. Don't you like you know what I mean? Like you yes. can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's start. All right, so here let me be in the correct That's beautiful I zoom in here. Let me let me just adjust for you guys. And guys, um, while she's doing that, maybe you could um, tell us what you did this weekend over in the comments. I'm not gonna flip it all up on the screen. We just want to um, see if it's still affecting the algorithm so that you get your notices and stuff. The more interactive you are with the live streams, we're finding you're getting your notices better. There we go. All right. So I'm starting here. What I'm working upside down. So let me try to be here. So I wanted to add like a bit of a scallop right here. And this is the darkest of the three pinks. And I'm going closest to the edge. All right. And here... When I get here, I'm doing like little swirls and the swirls aren't going to be visible, but they're to create the little scallop along the edge. Gotcha. Mar, there's no shimmer added, right? It's just the color. That's what there's you were talking no about earlier. Shimmer, no. Okay. And then I'm doing the darker pink all along the top edge, right? Like that. So okay. now this is the top, the, the darkest pink and I outline the whole thing in the darkest pink because it really won't show once I come in with the other two. Wow. They're going to need to see this on butterflies. Oh, yeah. All right. So there. And now I'm grabbing the middle one. Well, it looks like they all had very fun weekends, I have to say. Oh, good for them. They I mean, did all kinds of stuff. Everybody except Laura. Laura, we're sorry. You just stay home and be safe. They came in contact with somebody with COVID, so oh, they got to do that quarantine period. That's terrible. So I'm just shaking it to get it all to kind of like heal together. And now I'm grabbing the lightest pink, and I'm just kind of like adding reflections. Here's a dot a reflection line and just along where the curves are i'm adding the slightest pink to give it that kind of cartoony look was i in frame you were you were you were until you started shaking there now i can just grab if stuff is not cooperating and healing so when you're doing wet on wet, it is essential that everything be the same consistency mm -hmm. for it all to like dry at the same height. Mm -hmm. And so by doing it in one bowl and adding the color, like I said, so you get your consistency correct in your white icing, add a bit of color, bag it, mix it a little bit, add your like more color, mix it a little bit, bag it until you get to your, how many colors you want, you know? Gotcha. So, and, and that's why you go light to dark too, right? Exactly. So then I'm not doing three bowls. I'm not, I don't have a ton of different consistencies, you know? What would you say that consistency is? Is that like a 10 second? Probably 20, I want to say. Because if you look at okay. the thick one, until I shake it, it doesn't really level. You know? Hey, so with the, the lollipop stick, here, let me just put it in here. Where can I be? So what I usually will put a little bit of icing in the bottom because they do come out, they do pop out. And if you find mm. that it takes up a lot of room on your cookie sheet, sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut them in one inch pieces and then like they're basically garbage after, but it holds my shape while it bakes. And then I pop them out and use a fresh stick that isn't full of butter and grease and stuff. Oh, so that's, is, is that a wooden, is that a wooden dowel stick? Is no, just lollipop sticks. Paper okay. does not burn in the oven for the amount of time. 
And if you watched my episode when I was on for Christmas cookie challenge, I baked straws. I mean, it's not in there long enough, hot enough to burn or catch on fire or whatever. It's perfectly fine. So again, these chocolate cookies are tough for with regards to um, markers to write and add guidelines. And I did bake with a perforated mat, which is tough to see. And that is also not helpful because normally you could use your scribe to scratch your guidelines, but the perforated mm -hmm. mat really impedes that little kind of ability to do that. So you're That's going nice. to have to either airbrush in white or know how to draw. <laughs> to mark them right so they love the ombre there's several of them that have said they're going to start working in ombre immediately they didn't know that they could do bake with the stick so that was really good i bet i bet we'll see a lot more of the pop bouquets soon so this is just the top part of the beak so that's white and immediately i'm grabbing my black which i second guessed myself after because you can barely see it but it's, it was, you know, the end of the beak of the flamingo and then down like that. Okay. And then you want all this to heal and you can like set it aside to dry a little, little bit before you do the pink. And what I did with my needle is I just pulled a bit of the black up into the white, just a very faint line to give it like the look of his mouth, you know, mm -hmm. like the slit between the two pieces of the beak, you know, that very slight, just a little detail. And then th by adding the icing here around the stick, sometimes, well, in this particular case, the wing is going to be over it, but sometimes the icing will slightly dip there as it dries. So if you add a stiff icing just right here before you flood, it'll mm -hmm. stop that little dipping that could occur. Okay. I actually thought you, are you putting a separate wing on this? Yes, it's the other okay. cookie, but I was just explaining in other, like, let's say you weren't adding a wing. Oh, gotcha. If, if you know, that would be the, the issue. And, you, and this would hold up if you weren't doing the wing, right? If you just wanted to do it flat and do oh, a layer yes. of icing. A wing is a question of just, you know, an added layer of, uh, of uh, headache for no reason. <laughs> no, it's, it's just. It just adds to it, you know? So here now in the design, the wing, a lot of it is hidden. So don't knock yourself out doing a lot of detail over here. We're focusing our attention about like at the neck to the head. We're not, we're, like we're filling here, but we're not spending a lot of time creating ombre and blah, 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 right? Right. So this is my darkest color. to about here, and then I'm gonna do it from the top of the head here. Sally loves it. She says this is just adorable. Yeah, flamingos have a fan club too, I think. Yes, summertime in Florida when I lived there, this was like, this was everything. Oh yeah, they love the, and now this is the medium. So I'm not going to do the body just, just yet because I want to make sure everything is dealt with over here. So I can, you know, wait for, for that portion. Do you know what I mean? Like I can fiddle with this, make sure that everything is healing well, and then I'll go back to where it's essentially going to be hidden on the finished cookie. So now. Mar, we have a question about yeah. how, oops, wait, sorry. I went too far. How would you price a cookie that has that separate add on wing? Oh, at least another dollar fifty-two dollars. What do you think, Amy? Yeah, I I think sometimes you have to set these um, sets up ahead of time, and you have to see how much dough you use, right? And that little wing is at least a half. It, I don't know how big it actually is in person, but at least it's another half a cookie, right? It's at least two inches. Oh yeah. So I would charge for what I charge for that normally. So this uh, is the lightest thing. But in a bouquet, right, you could mix them. So you could just set your price of your bouquet of flamingos and some of them could have it and some of them don't need to have it. Well, right? I want to show the bouquet that I did again and, and just point something out. I'll show it in a second. All right, so now here is the lightest pink, a reflection, and I did add a white kind of 
circle for the black eye just for it to have like an outline and for it to have a bit of definition. And now I'm able to fill the body. Now with regards to the this, you can either pop your wing cookie in the wet icing. Be mindful though that if you do opt to do it that way, um, don't add too much icing because it will all like kind of squish out. Right. So go less. Like here, I'm not. I'm not gonna. You see how I've left a lot of it kind of like that. And now I'm gonna rest like this. That is so cute. And there he is. And I just want to show you the difference. So on the other one, let me show you the the version that I had uploaded. If you notice the wing now, this back point is down. You'll see in the video, it's up. And it does look wrong now that I see it. So the, the one that I'm mounting now has no additional cookie. It's just like, you know, flamingo. But you see it, it's pointed up. Oh. If you look in the back, those are um, palm trees. Super simple palm trees that I made in the same way. I cut off the tree part and it was a great filler for a flamingo bouquet, you know? And, in this, cute. and in this case, the, the beak was just white and I added the black end in marker. So Mar, what would you do? Would you just do your ruffle on the lower edge of, of the one like what you had in your hand? Would you just flip what you did? I think so, yeah. I would just rotate it if you wanted to have the ruffle. So cute. So now this is just one that I did earlier. I'm just going to show you the eye. So this is the circle, you know, mm -hmm. and now I'm just adding a little black circle to that white area that I, and like the oversized eyes just gives it a nice like little cartoon look. And I'm barely squeezing out icing and I've got the little reflection. And then Jeremy here. Says they're both masterpieces. Once he wants to know what you're talking about. <laughs> And so again, now this is dry. So now I can just kind of rest that on. Oh, so cute. And there he is. And, or she is, whoever, whatever. <laughs> the boys are just as pretty as the girls in this, right? Yes. And so here is, just to show you, so that plain version. And you can come in now if you wanted, you know, like there's just infinite possibilities. So you can, once it's dry, come in and add like some some swirls and some whatever to it to jazz it up. You see, that's cute too. I mean, it's really so many ways to decorate these flamingos. They love them. And they also would like to know if you can do a tutorial soon for um, eyes and faces. Do you do any of that? Um, I, I have a few actually in the cookie school group. Okay. Eyes, we could do a session on eyes. Eyes are mm -hmm. tricky. Eyes are tricky. Um, would it be more of a cartoon eye or a real eye? Um, Priscilla, are you asking for car cartoon eye or real eye? Like people, people drawing eyes. So here, let me move these guys. That back. might be, don't tell anyone, but that might be the only candy that I'm not a super huge fan of is the pre-done eyes. They scare me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the pre-done pre eyes that you buy? Yes, yes. You can drop in. If they're not dropped in just right, they they frighten me. <laughs> and I think they're both saying cartoon eye. Oh, um, real eye. Priscilla's saying real eye. Laura from South Africa is saying cartoon eyes. And then Priscilla's saying or both. So just anything. Okay. okay. Well, put that, I'll put that on, on the list. Maybe... Um, have some cute like characters coming up that would yes <laughs> see you know what i mean priscilla's saying she they look possessed too see there there's a way to drop them in a cookie with thick enough icing they look perfect but sometimes you have to kind of immerse them into yes. the icing you have to you can't just let them kind of right. float above the They're eye at halloween though huh for like in the candy jars with the google eyes for halloween they're good yeah right they look well, halloween scary. has to be scary yes so perfect it's perfect. So yeah, imagine this with the with the palm trees. How do you have a video up for that palm tree? I'd love to see it. 
the palm tree. I'd have to see if I put it in the, because Patreon, the cookie school group on Patreon has had videos uploaded there for much longer. Okay. So there's much more content there. Okay. And so that's why some videos are not on Facebook and they are on Patreon. Patreon's existed since I looked since 2014. Wow. There's a lot of content over there versus Facebook that I just created like Wow. Well, Mar, do you perfect. realize a few more years, that'll be 10 years you've had that up? Yeah. Wow. The year you were doing at some point. Yeah, and you were doing cookies for years before you even started that group. Yes, yes. Look yes. at how much free knowledge you guys get every week. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> it's the yeah. trees that will make the flamingos perfect. Well, you know, the trees, what the trees do is they actually fluff up your set so you can say oh this is a whatever piece set and those ones don't take so long right and the thing also that happens is those are the first ones usually the customers will eat because they feel bad eating the super pretty ones so they don't pick at the back ones that are like not as fancy and then they taste it and then they, then it gives them the oomph to want to eat the pretty ones. So that's what those, the, those ones do. And it's so pretty too, right? Because the palm trees can be taller and you can make the flamingos at different heights. So yes. It's just and, beautiful looking. And I had, again, not to harp on it, but if you look at the palm trees, I had gold, like chocolate covered, like kind of M&Ms. They're not. I but saw they're, that. So they, they made my coconuts and it was just like, gave it fancy touch you know perfect like, you have to shop around for the pearls and the different things i bet you you could paint yellow m m's gold yes yeah i've tried it it does work yeah so i did it for buttons on a, a nutcracker i think the mini ones and it worked perfect oh so maybe palm trees we might have to do some more palm trees as we get into summertime Yes, well, there's summertime. I mean, it's so many different um, design possibilities, right? Yes. It's literally, I mean, from flip flops to the beach to, uh, I mean, really, my brain explodes sometimes <laughs> at the sheer just possibilities of it all. Mar, right? You don't even want to tell them how far ahead you're working. That would blow everyone's mind right now. Well, I mean, they have to, like, it's it's when you're doing this type of stuff, like people that are working in magazines or anything that's in this type of world, they're way ahead right. in the holidays. Right. I've got, I've got Halloween cookies on the counter over there. I mean, it is, it, it, it's how you stay on track and, and can produce the stuff that you need to produce. So that's oh, it, guys. That was a lot, but I hope you enjoyed it. Amy's Bees, My Flamingos. Hey, you know, they, I guess, sometimes <laughs> meet in nature. Do you have any idea what you're doing next week? Um, next week, I, I'm actually going to cut my cookies today. So I'll start digging. Next week is, is it June for us next week? Mm, yes, I think actually it's going to be June. Let me look. But I think it's going to be June 1st next week. It is. So yeah, June, June 1st. 1st is when I release all my new tutorials. I have them ready and ready to go for June 1st. And so maybe I'll do a little pre of the of what's loaded for the groups to incite us to sign up to my cookie schools. So yeah, for the great. Facebook group, right? Is that where they come out? They're going to be on Patreon and on Facebook. Okay. But for me, it's better if you sign up to Patreon for okay. with regards to the commission that they take. Gotcha. It's going to be some really nice. I created actually a little B one too. You did. Yeah, you, I showed it oh, to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember. Lot. You guys are going to love that. You're not going to do that on here live? No, the B box is too okay. complex. I'm probably going to maybe show parts of it. Okay. But it'll be uh, in the group. And so, I, yeah. I've so. seen it. It's beautiful. So, thank you, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. And if you want to join me on Friday with um, Sweet Anne's and Hanyelas, we'll be decorating on Friday at 1. <laughs> Do you know who's decorating this week? It's me and Han, if I'm not mistaken. All and right. tomorrow, they're going live on Instagram at one o'clock. No, at noon. Han said noon. Noon on Instagram. So, and if you guys are curious about the most, that I did some, uh, I did a live last Wednesday. And if people were asking about it because they're used to us here. So it's on Instagram. It's on my IGTV. 
alive from the, from there where I did terrazzo cookies. Oh, okay. and let's see. Amber was just there. We'll see you Friday. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Where's our picture here so we can, there it is. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye. If you'd like to catch the replay, you can watch it on Facebook and on YouTube. See you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.